The Stanley Cup playoffs are only in their second day and the Department of Player Safety already has its hands. After suspending Drew Doughty for one game for a hit to the head on Wednesday night, all heck broke loose around the league on Thursday night. In the Washington-Columbus game you had Josh Anderson getting ejected for boarding Mitchell Kempney and Tom Wilson knocking Alexander Wenberg out of the game. Then, midway through the third period of the Boston Bruins-Toronto Maple Leafs game we had what might be one of the dirtiest plays of the NHL when Nazem Kadri was given a five-minute major and a game misconduct for charging Boston's Tommy Wingles. The Dops has already announced that Kadri will have a disciplinary hearing on Friday for boarding, charging. NBC's Stanley Cup playoff hub, as Wingles was down on his hands and knees along the boards, Kadri took a deliberate run at him and launched himself into the vulnerable Bruins forward. You can see it in the video above. Kadri had been skating a fine line for most of the night with his physical play. Just four minutes before he was ejected he was penalized for boarding, and was also involved in a knee-on-knee -knee collision with Rick Nash. It was an eventful night for him, needless to say. This one, though, will be the one that gets him a phone call from the league on Friday and will probably keep him out of the lineup for at least part of the series. Adam Gretz is a writer for Pro Hockey Talk on NBC Sports. Drop him a line at Thablog at NBCSports.com or follow him on Twitter at Agretz. Five games on the second night Tampa Bay Lightning 5, New Jersey Devils 2 Lightning lead series 1-0 The good news for the Devils is Taylor Hall scored a goal in his first ever playoff game. That is pretty much where the good news stopped for them in Game 1 on Thursday night as the Lightning rolled to a 5-2 win thanks in large part to a three-point night from Andre Pallet. There was a lot of concern about the Lightning heading into the playoffs based on the way they kind of backed into the postseason down the stretch, but maybe those concerns were a little premature. They are still a great team. Boston Bruins 5, Toronto Maple Leafs 1 Bruins lead series 1-0 It was the Brad Marchand show in Boston as the Bruins completely demolished Toronto in Game 1 of their series. Marchand had a goal, an assist, and continued to try and get under the skin of Leo Komarov in a rather unconventional way. The Maple Leafs looked like they might keep it close when Zach Hyman tied the game, 1-1, with a great individual effort, but the Bruins just completely dominated this one. Columbus Blue Jackets 4, Washington Capitals 3 Blue Jackets lead series 1-0 This was a violent game with an ejection, Tom Wilson, taking out Alexander Wenberg, Nick Foligno taking a putt to the face, and Brooks or Pick hitting Ian Cole so hard that it sent his stick flying deep into the stands. The Blue Jackets also made sure that things get a little tense in Washington by jumping out to an early series lead thanks to Artemi Panarin's overtime goal to help them overcome an early two-goal deficit to pick up the 4-3 win. Nashville Predators 5, Colorado Avalanche 2 Predators lead series 1-0 This one was the Philip Forsberg show thanks to his two third-period goals. His first goal goes in the books as the game winner. His second. Goal is going to give Avalanche rookie defenseman Sam Girard nightmares. San Jose Sharks 3, Anaheim Ducks 0 Sharks lead series 1-0 The Ducks were one of the best home teams in the NHL this but it did not matter on Thursday night. Mostly because Evander Kane, playing in his first ever NHL playoff game, scored a pair of goals to help lead the Sharks to the win. NBC's Stanley Cup playoff hub 3 stars 1. Evander Kane, San Jose Sharks. His production HASNT always been consistent, but when HES on he has been unstoppable at times for the Sharks. He had one of those games on Thursday night with a pair of goals in the Sharks' win. This is his third multiple goal game since arriving in San Jose at the trade deadline, too. Pekka Rinja, Nashville Predators, Rinja gave up a goal on the first shot he faced on Thursday night, but he rebounded nicely to stop 25 of the 27 shots he faced. Some of them were highlight reel saves. Like this one. This was by far the best of Rinna's career and it is probably going to get to him the Vezina Trophy nod. His first playoff game of the show he is ready to pick right up where he left off in the regular. 3. Artemi Panarin, Columbus Blue Jackets. He has given the Columbus Blue Jackets the impact player they desperately needed, in his first playoff game with the team on Thursday night was sensational, scoring the first overtime goal of the 2018 Stanley Cup playoffs, and it was one heck of an individual effort. Factoid of the night that Columbus win was a big one and an historic one for the Blue Jackets. Thanks to their game 1 OT victory CBJ lead a playoff series for the first time in franchise history, Sportsnet stats at SN stats April 13, 2018 Friday's schedule Pittsburgh Penguins vs. 
Philadelphia Flyers, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, Winnipeg Jets vs. Minnesota Wild, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time, Los Angeles Kings vs. Vegas Golden Knights, 10 p.m. Eastern Time, Adam Gretz is a writer for Pro Hockey Talk on NBC Sports. Drop him a line at Thablog at NBCSports.com or follow him on Twitter at Agretz. For a large portion of the 2017-18 there was an MVP push coming out of the city of Boston for one of their top forwards, and it was very justified. It was just being directed at the wrong player. While Patrice Bergeron is looked at as the centerpiece of the Bruins, not only their dominant top line, but the team itself, and a player that should have received some MVP love this, the best and most valuable player on the team is Brad Marchand. He just is. For or as great as Bergeron has been for as long as he has been, March and has become the guy in Boston. NBC's Stanley Cup playoff hub, he is one of the best offensive players in the league. He is as dominant a two-way player as there is in the NHL. He is usually doing something that is either going to impress you or infuriate you. All of that was on display on Thursday night in the Bruins' 5-1 blowout win over the Toronto Maple Leafs where he did pretty much everything that makes March and the player that he is. He opened the scoring in the first period by blowing past Roman Polak to score a power play goal. Replays show he was probably offside by about an inch, but the Maple Leafs selected not to challenge. Later in the game he set up with David Pasnak to extend the lead. It's not just the pass of the ability to find the open man, check out what he does to the Toronto defender to completely fake him out to get himself in a position to make the play. When he was not scoring goals or setting them up, he was working to keep the Maple Leafs pinned in their own zone. When he was on the ice during 5-on-5 five five play the total shot attempts were 22-5 in favour of the Bruins, and the goals were 1-0. That is the sort of stuff that has a made March and one of the game's elite offensive players. Since the start of the 2015-16 his 110 goals are the third most in the NHL. His 231 points are the eighth most. He has done that despite missing more than 20 games during that stretch. His 1.03 points per game are sixth most. But when you're talking about Brad March and you're not just talking about a dominant offensive player, you're also talking about the pest. The player that toes the line and oftentimes finds himself in hot water for the way he plays and the things he does. That, too, was on display on Thursday night when he did this to Leo Komarov. That is, well, that is not something you should not be doing, and shockingly as it is not even the first time Marchand has done something like that to Komarov, having already given him a kiss on the cheek during a game back in November. With the exception of some sort of a controversial hit that might warrant a fine or a suspension, we pretty much received the entire Brad Marchand experience on Thursday night. Dynamic offense. Dominant two-way play. A little bit of weirdness as he tried to get under the skin of an opponent. If the Maple Leafs do not find an answer for him, and his entire line, this could be a very short series. Adam Gretz is a writer for Pro Hockey Talk on NBC Sports. Drop him a line at Thablog at NBCSports.com or follow him on Twitter at Agretz. The Columbus Blue Jackets needed a forward that could take over a game. They got one in Artemi Panarin and after making a huge impact during the regular, he helped lift the Blue Jackets to a 4-3 overtime win on Thursday night against the Washington Capitals in Game 1 of their first-round Eastern Conference playoff series. After Seth Jones scored on a power play late in the third period to send the game to overtime, Panarin scored the game winner by completing an incredible rush where he blew past Dmitry Orlov and then casually roofed a shot under the crossbar, beating Capitals goalie Philip Grabauer from a sharp angle. You can see it in the video above. NBC's Stanley Cup playoff hub, Columbus acquisition of Panarin was one of the great moves of the offseason. For or as good as the Blue Jackets' offense was a go they finished sixth in the NHL in goals scored they still lacked to go to forward that could be a difference maker. A player that other teams had to constantly worry about every time he was on the ice. Panarin has been all of that and so much more. In his first with the Blue Jackets he showed that his production the past two years in Chicago was not simply the result of playing alongside Patrick Kane if anything, it seems now that Panarin seemed to help elevate Kane. He set career highs in assists 55 and total points 82 and was one of the most dominant possession driving forwards. In the NHL, finishing the regular with a 57% Corsi rating also the best mark of his career.
In his first playoff game with his new team he scored a goal the game winner, picked up an assist, and was a 63% Corsi player 26 shot attempts for only 15 against for the Blue Jackets with him on the ice during 5-on-5 five five play. In other words, another dominant night. The Blue Jackets had to overcome an early two-goal deficit, and then another deficit late in the third period, to get the win. More from this game Alexander Wenberg exits game after hit to head Blue Jackets Josh Anderson ejected for hit from behind, Adam Gretz is a writer for Pro Hockey Talk on NBC Sports. Drop him a line at Thablog at NBCSports.com or follow him on Twitter at Agretz. The bad hits keep coming on the second night of the Stanley Cup playoffs. First, Josh Anderson was ejected from the Columbus Blue Jackets game against the Washington Capitals after a boarding major on Mitchell Kempney. Then, Toronto Maple Leafs forward Nazem Kadri was sent for an early shower for a dirty hit on Tommy Wingles of the Boston Bruins. Now, Capitals forward Tom Wilson drilled Alexander Wenberg with a hit to the head, forcing the later from the game. CBJ injury report, see Alexander Wenberg has suffered an upper body injury and will not return to tonight's game at Washington, CBJ public relations at Blue Jackets PR April 13, 2018 with Anderson's ejection and Wenberg's injury, the Blue Jackets are down to 10 forwards. Still, they managed to tie the game 3-3 late in the third period off the stick of Seth Jones. George Paros at the NHL Department of Player Safety is going to have himself a busy day on Friday. Scott Billick is a writer for Pro Hockey Talk on NBC Sports. Drop him a line at Thablog at NBCSports.com or follow him on Twitter at Scott Billick.